Hello and welcome to the next lecture. Today we're going to speak about the GVT security or role-based access um, with the GVT. And uh, GVT is a really nice uh, technology that you can use everywhere, basically starting from the uh, simplest apps that will authenticate someone um, for like, you know, social profiles and whatever you use. Uh, Token-based access is like the easiest form that you can use and the and the easiest form that um, I mean, uh, ex except the like you know basic authentication with user password, uh, token can help you sustain the uh, like connection in the long run without the um, saving this you know user and password somewhere. So you can log in once, have this token for like for a while, uh, and uh, don't worry about so that somebody can steal your password, and. Um, so yeah, so let's firstly create a project. I have here a default create uh, method uh, with the security GVT artifact. Then we have tag the now profile resource and then slash profile. And we have a REST easy JSON B with a GVT extension. So let's create a project and open it up in IntelliJ IDEA. All right, so I opened up a project and we can see in the POM XML that there is a, a uh, sorry, smaller GVT and that's exactly what we need. So um, let's, with this in mind, let's uh, create um, our private and public key. So for the GVT uh, here, uh, you need to have um, a GVT key uh, that will be used to generate um, JSON wave token. So sorry, the PEM key that will be used to, to generate GVC, GVT token and uh, use it everywhere. So uh, this is super simple. I have a few um comments that you can run so let's uh, let's go to our security gvt like this and let's firstly create a public key you can see that it's generated um, and so then we create a private key from this so there is like you know there is a no difference between which way are you moving private or public so you'll have the same thing at the end so we have a public and private key and the last thing that we want to do is to create an RSA uh, PEM. Oops. Uh, so from this public key, we use a um, we use basically a private key that was created by the public key uh, to get an RSA. So now we have um, two keys, one of which is public, the other is private. So of course, um, let's move them into the resources folder specifically meta inf dot resources so i'll just copy them over to the resources folder here so we now have them here and uh, let's open up our application properties and uh, copy the few more uh, links here so we specify the public key location meta inf resources public key pem right that we have here and also we have a verify issue do not tag so there is also small small IGVT enable uh, set to true. So yeah, so uh, with this in mind, uh, we left everything as is. And uh, now, uh, as we have these two pub, um, public and private keys, let's start coding, right? So so I have this uh, GVT utils file that was used by the Quarkus, and uh, so um, I'll just copy it over and use it uh, for our um uh, lesson right so let's uh, create a folder i'll keep all the authorities as is um so yeah so this is called org acme gvt utils token util so we'll have this class and yeah, i'm just copy over everything here so i won't uh, go into details how it works because it's not a topic of this video uh please have a look at gvt uh any like gvt lessons uh, outside. So we'll use this class for uh, using uh, in our uh, services, right? So let's create the first uh, service uh, that will be called. So we have a service and token utils, um, token, token service, sorry. Oops, I'll rename it service. So we'll have one single class. So let's make it up like, uh, I think we can go with the request scoped. 
So this will be used only in the requests. Uh, so yeah, so let's uh, create a pub, uh, one method public string generate token and here we'll have a string username, a string password and then string um, birthday. Um, we use birthday to for for a GVT token password. Oops, password. Okay, so the parameters will be string uh, email. Uh, so we'll have email birthday, uh, email username and birthday, right? String uh, email user name. What is this? I don't know. Okay, and then string birthday. So birthday is just for you know like to put some more data into it and verify later uh, this field so you can return it for example uh, and uh, so yeah so we can inject our um, i'm not sure if it's if it can be injected i don't think yeah so we can just use um yeah so return token utils uh, generate token string uh, let's see so what we can do uh, we can uh, generate a token string here, but uh, for this we need to have a GVT claims. So I have uh, some preset for such thing. Uh, so here uh, you can specify whatever you like uh, for um, oops, uh, birth date. Okay, I messed it up a little bit. So, um, so the GVT claims is basically a field, a parameters to your GVT, which you can later verify. They will be encoded with the uh, private key and then um, you can read them uh, afterwards when, when you receive this uh, token. So we also uh, specify in the, in the application properties uh, uh, MP GVT verify issuer. So this is used for like to check if the token is correct, if the token is valid and it was used, issued exactly by you or like someone who generated this token. So we use this field that we set here, don't know tech, uh, to verify it later in a uh, verify issuer, right? So yeah, so now uh, we have everything prepared. Uh, we will throw the exception, we don't need to do any more. Actually, we can try catch uh, catch it as well, um, like this. And uh, yeah, so we can just return the token itself and we can also print it out if you want. Um, so yeah, so we can get a logger. Okay, so I created a logger and let's log it as well. So logger, oops, a logger uh, info token uh, generated and then plus token, right? Something like this. So uh, yeah, we will see it then when we generate something. So obviously, obviously for um, so. We'll, we'll, we'll throw a runtime exception because we don't care about the unhappy result in our case, but you obviously need to um, check it as well. So yeah, so we set the old information. So you can see the UPN name is email, preferred username is username, birth date is birthday. And then the very important part is the groups. So the groups is uh, itself, um, you know, uh, the roles that we used previously in the security section, in any security section. So we use this uh, roles, uh, groups as a roles. So in our case, we put only the role user for us, but we also can put the role admin if needed, of course. Um, so yeah, with this in mind, um, let's uh, switch to re registration. So now we have a token a service that will be used to generate a token, right? And now, we of course uh, can uh, create a um, let's say we'll use the profile uh, so we'll create a new post method um, that will be produces produces media type application json public uh, and we'll return a string i think whatever uh, let's return a string 
uh, so uh, register right so we'll have a um, query param called username of course string username uh, then we'll have a um, query for um, email so we just uh, in this case we don't care about the uh, validity of the user uh, I'll tell you why in a second so we'll have an email and then query for um, uh, birth date string I don't like to write it one more time so yeah so we don't care in this case in the validity of the user because you should check it uh, not uh, when you generate the GVT or use it. So I suggest you to use, for example, a database or something to store your users. And then you have this register method uh, where you will call the Postgres or whatever, whatever database you use for users. Check if it's correct. So you'll, you'll need to have a password here, of course, for, for sure. Uh, and in this case, uh, if the everything is okay, if it's correct, uh, for example, if you have a username uh, in the database and the username's password is same, and it's, of course, if you use it correctly, it should be encrypted. So you check if the encrypted password is uh, the same as the password you received. And uh, yeah, so email and all this stuff uh, should come um, uh, be the same so you you know you you don't have like any issue with it so you only issue gvt tokens to valid users and you also can uh, for example um, make them you know last not so long so that the users can then re-log in or something like this so yeah with this in mind uh, let's uh, let's use our um let's inject our token ut uh, actually what was that token service yeah service so let's also make a, uh, this profile request scoped so we can inject our token service and here we can call this service um, generate token and here we just copy over everything email username um, birthday right like this and we return the string that we generated so uh, ideally you would like to have something more like a map in the output and we can actually do it why not so let's create a new hash map of the string to string and uh, let's put uh, into it let's actually make it like this uh, add um, put um, so we'll have a token right and then we'll have a token afterwards so let's create a, a token like this so we'll firstly generate a token then put it into the database uh, into the map and we will uh, output it back to the um, to our um, return to return of the method, right? Okay, so we can firstly check if it's working or not. Let's go to the security GVT and call the main week dev. Okay, so it started. Let's go to the postman. And uh, so I had here something old. Uh, so we have a post method uh, to the what is it profile right profile uh, and then we have a username um, equals test and uh, to put here basically the parameters so you can put them here as well username and then email equals test at gmail.com or whatever and then birth date date equals one 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 or two thousand whatever right so this should um work and let's see why we have a null pointer right now so uh i i think that we don't have um uh, we don't have a private key in correct position so i think what we had to do is actually uh, copy it over to resources uh because um it should uh, be at the resources folder uh, so in this case let's see if it will work in this case and yeah you can see that uh, it's working uh, perfectly we have a token here and then the token itself and we can use it um, but but uh, we don't have any method that we can use it for it uh, and so let's create a method so and the, the main part of course of this video is how to secure uh, the resource <clears throat> with your uh, with your um, uh, you know 
uh, GVT token. So in, in token utils, you might have seen that we have a row user. So we have this user which we uh, included in our uh, token service, right? So you can see that we have arrays list token user. You can I can replace it with user as well, Oops. like this. So this will, will, will be still valid. So this, uh, anything that you put here will be any um, roles that you will specify. So there is no such, um, and there is no such, you know, object or something uh, corresponding to roles. It's just a string, right? So if it's present, then it's valid. So if you put uh, to your user an admin string, uh, he will be, if you will specify that this method can be opened by admin, as a string this will be valid so always make sure what you put to your users and uh, so and as I said in this case if you uh, specify roles allowed and here you can specify user right so let's firstly um, remove this part right and uh, it will be like um, general so let's see what will happen uh, in our case we'll just call the get on the uh, profile without the header, I think, yeah. So this is, you, you see that it's not work, uh, I mean, it's working, but not as expected. So now I'll use a roles allowed admin, for example, right? And in this case, uh, you will see that it's already unauthorized, which is expected because you specified the annotation called roles allowed. And now if I put it as a user um, and uh, we specify our token in a, in a, uh, in a uh, headers, so we'll create the authorization, uh, and which we can use this um, bearer token, right? So we can specify here uh, our um, oops, our token that we generated. Let's generate it one more time, um, and uh, so yeah, I'll need to remove this. Oh yeah, and we need to also have it like uh, permit all. Here. So if you use permit all, if you was on my previous videos, permit all will give um, access to this method to all of the uh, requests, whatever you have token or not. Uh, so yeah, so let's uh, get the token. So generated our token here. And um, it's funny, there's a dot, okay. And so we can now uh, use this get method with peer token with this correct token. And you can see it in authorization. Let's remove it actually. So yeah, we have it like this. And I think it should be in temporary. Okay, it's not, but uh, it will be, it will appear in a second. So yeah, so we'll use a beer token like this. And let's try to get it. And you can see that it's um, available, right? So it's correct. If I remove the token, so uh, if you you can remove these parameters if you want. So we will have a get on the localhost 8080 profile, and uh, so yeah, if we have a, a token, it's working. If it's not, it's not. So if you don't have a token, it's unauthorized, of course. And with this one, of course, it will work. And if you call not the correct um, um, method with the um, different roles then it's, it won't work as well. So yeah, so you, you, I, hope, I hope that you got the idea how it works. And uh, the, the way I showed it you is really um, easy and um, um, super simple, right? So there's nothing uh, super hard to do here and I uh, hope you will use it uh, in your next applications or something similar, of course. So yeah, now you know how to use the GVT in Quarkus and how easy it is. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.